of the Lord. God led you here. Order, what Christ you gave your life to? Which one? Which Jesus you gave your life to? Neither one of these? Oh. Order, oh, Jesus has one thing. Okay. Okay. Okay, so if you gave Okay, I'll let you go. Go ahead. They're equally important. They're equally important. This is the Holy Spirit. Everything you say, I got a scripture coming in my head. That's the Holy Spirit. things. Right. Romans 7, watch. Because the battle is, okay, I want to smoke weed. No, I can't smoke weed. I want to come out here and pop some of these sisters. I can't do that. I want to come out here and get drunk and party. No, I can't do that. So a man who gave himself to Christ, you shouldn't even be out here. Because why? Read. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. That the laws of God is spiritual. The God's law are spiritual. Hold on. I get, listen, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold okay, up, let me finish the scripture. Let me finish the scripture. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold in the sin. So now, when Christ hung around those people, what was he telling them? With the publicans and sinners, what was he telling them? What was he telling them? I'm going to tell you. Give me, give me that in Matthews. All right, 417. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what he was teaching them. Because you think Christ was going to them just to say, hey, come on, let's drink. Come on, let's get something to eat. Come on, let's get high. You think he was doing that? Exactly. Exactly. So why do you think we come out here amongst these people? The same reason. Watch, watch, read. The book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. For that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when he hung around publicans and sinners, he was teaching them about repentance. How to come back to the most high God. So how do we repent? You tell you gave your life to Jesus, you ought to know this. You ought to be able to give me one, you ought to give, be able to give me one scripture to show repentance. You gave your life to Jesus. Neither one of those, by the way. Which one? So give me one scripture of repentance. And, and, and that's always what we get. That's always what we get. Because that scripture has nothing to do with repentance. That ain't that, that's not telling you how to repent. Give me that. Give me that Proverbs over 28 and verse 13. Okay, okay, you're getting warmer, you're getting warmer, but we're going to do a help. Come on, read that. Proverbs 28, 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 13. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. You cover your sins, that means to make excuses. You don't want to, you got re every reason why you don't want to come out of that sin. We tell our people, hey, stop smoking weed. They got every reason. Oh, well, it's a God put it on the earth for medicine. Uh, they got all these dumb excuses. But no, God said be sober minded. Right? It says what? He that covers his sins shall not prosper. Read on. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. It's a two-step process. It says you have to confess and forsake. Read. Shall have mercy. And mercy is forgiveness. That's when you get the forgiveness. You got to stop doing it. You got to say, Lord, forgive me for going out to Bill Street to party. And stop coming out here. Because this is evil. This is evil. The only reason you should be out here is to do what we're doing. Spread the gospel. Because you gave it like to Jesus. You said. Right. So Jesus said, if you love him, do what? Yeah, yeah, you got a necklace on, the Jesus necklace? Oh, he do? Oh, man, the Last Supper. Huh? Okay, no, no, I'm asking you. Jesus said, if you love me, do what? You got the necklace on? Jesus said, if you love me, what are you supposed to do? You know what I'm talking about, right? Huh? If you love him, do what? 
I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you because this is what happens when you get into the Christian church. The book of John, chapter 14, and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandment. God said, if you're gonna love my son, you gotta keep my commandment. So hold on now. When you gave your life over to Jesus, did you start to keep God's commandments? Okay, name the ten commandments. Let's go. You all. Oh, here you go. You might be the first one. I got hope for you. I got my hope for you. Come on. You're right. One. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, man. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Do not covet your neighbors. Do not steal. Do not kill. Do not. Do not 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 Okay, alright, so listen, so listen, he helping, he helping you out, but listen, the, you know what the importance of the commandments is? Jump over, jump, jump to Matthew 19 and 16. No, 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 I'm going to show you what the importance of, of it. Read verse, uh, read verse 17, alright, watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Christ said there's only one good, that's God. When Christ came, he always gave glory unto his Father. Right? Watch this. But if thou art enter into life, because that was the question. The young man asked him, how do I get everlasting life? That's what we want, right? You want everlasting life. How do you get it? How to be born again, huh? Okay, now we're going to read it. We're going to read it because it's very simple. Watch. But if they will enter into life, keep the commandments. It says you got to keep God's commandments. you got to keep God's commandments. And guess what? Out of all of those commandments you named, you named about seven of them, you missed one. You know which one you missed? The one that tells you to remember it. It says remember this one. And that's the one you forgot. You know why you forgot it? Because in these churches, they don't teach God's commandments. Right? 
So if we know these things, why are we not doing them? We out here trying to have a little fun. This ain't the time for a little fun. Give me that now. Go to second. Now, I want to get through this scripture because I want you to see something. Because it's bigger than arguing about the white man. The white man has his place in prophecy, just like we got our place in prophecy. All right? So watch this. Give me uh, Second Peter 3, verse 10. The book of Second Peter, chapter 3, and verse 10. For the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord, he already said, is when God's going to judge this earth. Right. Right. He's going to come back like a thief in the night, meaning it's going to be a surprise. It ain't going to catch us off guard because we're waiting. We're waiting vigilantly. We hoping he come any moment. We're ready. We got our stuff in order. But a lot of these people, they're going to be caught off guard. They, a lot of people are Christians. A lot of these people go to church tomorrow morning. Right? You're just like Noah's Ark. Read. And which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. A great noise. Boom! It's a bomb. Bombs are going to go off. Watch. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What is going? What can melt the elements of the earth with fervent heat? Thermonuclear fire. Why do you think these people go into war? And all these wars and NATO and they're moving pieces here and making treaties here and all this stuff. They're going to go to war. They're going to go to. It's in. It's in their nature. They, they go to war. That's what they do. Read. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It says the earth is going to be burned up. This is the Holy Bible. Why are we not reading about this? This is the Holy Bible. King James Version. Right? It says the earth is going to be burned up. Read. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Peter says now, seeing that you know that all of these things are going to be dissolved. Bill Street's going to be destroyed. Right? All these things are going to be dissolved. Read. What manner of person are ye be? It says, what type of person should you be? You know that all this is going to be destroyed. So what type of person should you be? Read. In all holy, a holy conversation and godliness. Now, you being out here on Bill Street, brother, is this godliness what you're into right now? It's not. Right? It's not. So now, with you knowing that the judgment is coming, you got to fix that. We have brothers in Chicago. And listen. All of these brothers, this is the importance. Hold this, hold this, we're coming back. Hebrews 10, 25. The importance, you've seen us. You've seen us in Chicago. Why you ain't get down? Why you ain't get down? You got what? Yes, we do got services in Spanish. We do. You need, you need to be taught in Spanish? You didn't get it in English. You did, oh, you did. You got it? That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you what's important. Read the, the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is. It says we cannot forsake the fellowship and assembling of ourselves together. We can't, you can't come out here and assemble with them. They're not going to teach you nothing. They ain't going to do nothing but get you caught up in evil. You got to assemble yourself around men that's going to be able to do this. Watch. But exhorting one another. You got to get yourself around people that's going to be able to exhort you in what? In sin? No. Exhort you in righteousness. Exhort you in God's commandments. Exhort you to remember the Sabbath day. Right? Because how old are you, brother? You 47 years old and look at you, bro. Look at you. You behind. You behind. So if Christ come today, you caught off guard. You're supposed to be a leader in your community. But you got the silly mask on. And bro, it's not, I'm not trying to insult you, but I'm just showing you the gravity of the situation we're in. We're in a very grave situation. God's getting ready to judge this place. You go to the grocery store, the grocery store don't look the same. The shelves ain't stocked like they used to. And what happens when they shut, the grocery stores are shut down? What you gonna do then? A lot of people gonna get on their knees and pray to Jesus. That one. And he's not coming. He is not coming to save nobody. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. 
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.